God bless you. Good evening, everybody. How are you this evening? Pray that you have been enjoying the best of health. Pray that um, you have been conquering this international pandemic called COVID-19. And um, I pray that you have been following the protocols. If you notice in Jamaica today, we're having some real challenges. Um, not just Jamaica, but internationally. Um, but in our country, the hospitals are filling up or maybe are filled up and we are really struggling to bring this pandemic under control. But do you know that we, our God still reigns, still in charge? And so it could have been worse had it not been for the greatness and the grace of God. I want to thank you all for joining in this evening and sharing with us one more time in Bible class. Just want to let you know that the music we play in this video, we have no um, copyrights for them. However, we play them as a way to enhance our worship and to and for the glory of God. I pray right now that as you come on, I want to thank you all for joining here and overseas. And we pray that our program this evening will be a blessing as we share, amen, with a very tremendous topic. It says finish. The topic this evening is finish. What are we talking about? Stay with us while we share a word with you from the word of God. Put it bow your heads with me right now as we offer a word of prayer. Heavenly Father and our God, our Savior divine, we thank you this evening, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercies. <laughs> for indeed your mercies endure forever. We thank you because you have been good to us. You have kept us, God, from harm, from danger. You have protected us, Lord, from death under this tremendous, amen, international pandemic. But we ask you to continue to keep your people, Lord. I invite you here with us this evening, Lord, to be with us, guide our thoughts, pray for a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, pray for faith. Pray, Lord, amen, for discerning of spirit. Pray for a prophetic word. We depend on you right now. We look to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. This evening, as we share, the Lord has laid it on my heart <clears throat> to share with you this evening from a, a word that we all use every day. It speaks to the word finish. What does it mean to finish? <clears throat> finish in Wikipedia or in in the dictionary speaks of to to bring a task to an end or to bring an activity to an end <clears throat> in other words to complete something finish speaks to completing um, something first Chronicles chapter 28 verse 20 which I want to show to you this evening first Chronicles 28 verse 20 here's what the Word of God says <coughs> David said to Solomon his son he said son be strong and of good courage and do it fear not nor be dismayed for the Lord God, even my God, <clears throat> will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, <clears throat> until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of God. Solomon was in the process of building out um, a house for God, and his father, the old man David shared his son. 
He said, young man, be strong. Be of a good courage. If you're going to do anything with a hope to finish, you've got to be strong. And strength is not necessarily your muscles. Strength speaks to mind. Strength can speak, can speak to um, will, the will to win. But David said, be strong. Be not dismayed. For the Lord, which Lord? Even the Lord, his God, will be with you, Solomon. He will not forsake you. And I want to really drive this home at this time. When so many people are feeling so despondent. Be strong. The Lord will not forsake you. Until you have finished all the work. For the service of the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, friends. On this platform. I want to remind you. That if God gives you a responsibility, he will never leave you part way. His desire is whatever he has commissioned you to do, he will see you through to the end. You see, the finish of a race is just as important as the start of the same race. So I said, why you say that? This, this, when you stand at the start of the race, it means that you have a chance to be victorious. In other words, everybody who line up in that race is a potential winner. If I am in a race with Usain Bolt as fast as he is and as slow as I am, as long as I am in that race at the start, I have a chance to win. You know why? <clears throat> As the race begins, it could very well fall to the ground <clears throat> and I run and win. So the aim is getting the race. The finish of the race means that you still have as your mission. Whatever your focus was when you started. <clears throat> The mere fact that you're at the finish means that you have not lost focus. You are still running. You are still there. So start and do not come out of the race until you go through the finish line. Somebody said, but I don't want to look bad, come last. <clears throat> as long as you stay in the race, when the race is finished, you will have a position. If eight of you is in there, and you come the eighth person, then I report you as the last person. <coughs> I report you as the eighth person. You got to ensure, therefore, <coughs> that you finish. Very important that you finish. In addition, my friends, I'm the first one to tell you <clears throat> that once you enter a race, <clears throat> be prepared for some setbacks. Anything can happen. You know, there's a young man in Jamaica, well, there's a big man now in Jamaica, in his, in his middle age, Bertland Cameron. Bertland Cameron, <coughs> Jamaican Bertland, out of Spanish Town, <coughs> was one of the greatest 400 meter runner Jamaica has ever produced. One of the greatest 400 meter runner the world has ever seen. Bertland Cameron. <coughs> Bertland went to three consecutive Summer Olympics 1980, 1984, 1988, Bertland Cameron. Bertland won the 400 meter title at the first world championships in athletics held in Helsinki, Finland in 1983. 
And Bertland's time was 45.05 seconds. That's Bertland for you. But in, 19, in the 1984 Olympics, <clears throat> in the semifinals of the 400 meters, Bertland was the world champion at the time. Bertland was expected to win that uh, Olympic 400 meter run. But alas, when Bertland reached what, what a race started, he was doing well. And Bertland Cameron was one of the most prolific person you want to see running when he's, he has such a brilliant form. I speak very passionately about Bertland because the truth is we were in the same form together, St. Diego. So we always look out for Bertland. Bertland, when the, one, when the 400 meters started <clears throat> in 1984 Olympics, Bertland made it to the semi-finals. But as, as, if, as the guns said go, <clears throat> at 120 meters, we saw Bertland throw his hand up in the air because we knew he had a hamstring problem. Bertland Armstrong hit him at 120 meters. And Bertland backed out of the race. Bertland could have stopped. He had all the reason to stop. To stop. <clears throat> but we watched Bertland. I don't know what he said to himself. But Bertland picked up back in the race. <clears throat> By now he had lost distance. Everybody had run past him. But that is Bertland. In his mind, he was determined to finish. <clears throat> Bertland re entered the race. <clears throat> and Bertland ran, began to run past one, run past two, run past three. And Bertland ran and came fourth in that race, enough to give him a place in the finals of the 1984 Olympic 400 meter. Alas, when the race started, we all were looking out if he's going to come out. He couldn't make it out because he tore up his arm his arm string in order to finish that race. But you know what? Bertland ensured that he had a spot in the finals. Bertland ran to the finish. My word to you is, <clears throat> despite the setbacks you face, finish the race. Finish. <clears throat> also, I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, my friends, that, you know, Sometimes when I enter these contests, or sometimes when you're in an environment, so many things happen, and it forces you many times to have to run away. No, to come back into the race another time. In St. Luke 24, verse 24 to 30, I want to read for you. What happened to the great Lord and Savior, <clears throat> Jesus Christ? People sometimes can't deal with truth. And here was Jesus speaking to the, 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 um, the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heaven was shut up, <clears throat> three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, but none of them was, was Elias sent to, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, <clears throat> unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed. Saving Naaman, the Syrian. When the scribes and Pharisees heard Jesus <clears throat> speak this word of truth, they decided, you know what? We are going to throw him over the cliff. We are going to destroy him. The Bible said, and all in the synagogue, <clears throat> when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, anger, and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him onto the brow of the hill where on their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. Jesus had to like what we say in Jamaica. Remember, sometimes 
People sometimes can't deal with truth and receive to destroy you when truth is spoken to them. Remember, when you are dead, you cannot fulfill your mission. So in order to fulfill your mission, you must stay alive. So he who fights and runs away will live to fight another day. If you have to run away today, you are ensuring that you are still able to finish your mission. <clears throat> you are still able to re-enter the race at some point. So my word to you this evening is finish. <clears throat> no matter what opposition you are facing, you might back out a little to come back in at a later time. But my word to you this evening is finish. When Jesus saw their intention to destroy him, he decided, you know what? I am going to just disappear out of the midst now because I have a job to finish. What was it? Redemption. He had a job to die for us, but his time was not yet. I encourage you, no matter who will want to destroy you. Remember Solomon's, David said to Solomon, the Lord will not forsake you. So if sometimes you have to pull back in order to keep going forward, pull back, but stay where you can re-enter the race. You have got to finish. You must finish. Very important that you finish. I also want to <clears throat> encourage your brothers and sisters that in the race of life, sometimes we will lose some friends today to gain them back tomorrow. Very important. Sometimes we lose some friends today, but we'll gain them back tomorrow. There are times... When the people that you walk with today are not to be a part of your current season. That's very important. Very important. Let's look at Acts 16 and verse 35. Acts 16 and verse 35. <clears throat> the Bible said, and and when it was day Acts, Acts, sorry Acts 15 and verse 35 Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching the word of the Lord with many others also and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of God and see how they do. Barnabas <clears throat> determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. We call him John Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them. And departed from them unto Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. The contention was so sharp between them, <clears throat> that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark, and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas, and departed, being recommended by the brethren, unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. What happened here? What happened here in this instance? Barnabas, Paul, Mark, Silas, a number of them were together in ministry. And here it is that Paul said, you know what? I don't want Mark to be with me right now. 
It's not a part of my season right now. It does not mean that when you step aside now, they will never be of use to you another time, you know. And it's very important for us to preserve a friendship. And so today you might just lose a friend or some friends in order to gain them back tomorrow. But the thought I want to leave with you, listen what happened here. Did you know that time changes things? Do you know that giving up on some people sometimes is premature? Sometimes we're so easy to give up on people because at this point in time, they are not walking the same beat with us. And we give up on them, we walk away from them to the point where sometimes you will even lose their friendship. But I want to look at what happened to Paul and John Mark here. John Mark had left Paul when they were somewhere um, and Paul was just upset about it. And so he said to Barnabas, I don't want Mark anywhere near me right now. And they argued a lot about it. And anybody thought the friendship would be over. But you know when Paul took Silas, it was one of the greatest time in Paul's ministry. Because it was while Paul and Silas were in prison, God broke them out of prison. When they began to sing in the prison that night. <clears throat> Sometimes you might lose a child's favor right now. Sometimes you might lose their support right now. Because sometimes as young people go through their go through, they, they get a little different from you. And there is a level of separation. But I want to remind you that separation now does not mean separation forever. Paul let go Mark. Barnabas went with Mark. Paul grabbed Silas. Paul went with Silas. But God used them tremendously during that time. Also, it never meant that because they were separated, they would never ever get back together again. Because come with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 9 to 11. This is the same Paul writing now to, um, to Timothy. By now Paul was um, in prison in Rome. And Paul says to Timothy, Do thy diligence, come to shortly unto me. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Damatia. Paul was explaining all those who he expected to be by his side, they had rejected him now. And Paul felt alone. But Paul said to Timothy, Only Luke is with me. But hear the next word. Second Timothy 4 verse 11. Take Mark and bring him with thee. For it is profitable to me for the ministry. <clears throat> what happened there? When they went Pamphylia, they went their own way. They had a dispute. But years later, the same Apostle Paul said um, to, to Titus, to, to Timothy, Timothy, when you're coming, bring with me, bring with you Mark. Because I know that is profitable to me right now. If you've got to step aside to save your friendship, save it. But I want to say to you that the friendship is not over because your mission is to finish the work that God has given to you. And if your work 
has to be finished. It is going to be finished. And your work can never be finished if you constantly walk with malice in your mind, in your heart, and bitterness. You want to let it go. Paul let go Mark. Mark went with Barnabas. Paul lost that friend today, but gained him back some years later. When Paul, the same Paul said, this young man, by now Mark was a more matured young man, a more matured man. By now Mark was, um, Paul was able to say, he is now profitable to me in ministry. I encourage you in the name of Jesus, do not, in losing a friend, do not cause that friend to become your enemy. It's not necessary. It might mean that right now we're just not walking in the same season. It might mean at this time we're not walking in the same um, vision. It might mean at this time we're not seeing things the same way. But I encourage you, do not lose friends because you're going to gain them back tomorrow. Amen? Very important. I also want to, and my theme this evening is finish. Because you know what? Sometimes your worst enemy can become your best friend. And your best friend can become your worst enemy. But I encourage you, whatever is happening around you and to you, whatever God has placed in your spirit to be accomplished, it must be accomplished. You must finish. Finish. Make up in your mind that whatever happens, I am going to finish. Then I want to now take you, therefore, having brought you along to say, be prepared for setbacks. Remember Bertrand Cameron, his arm swing hit him at 120 meters. But when the 400 meters was over, he was booked in the finals of that race in 1984 Summer Olympics. Secondly, we said, sometimes you've got to run away to remain in the race. What do I mean? Jesus, when he saw them, was about to hurt themselves, because they can't hurt him. He's, he disappeared out of their midst. And later on, he and those same men and women who were so bent on destroying, he sat and fed them. Because a disagreement today do not mean that we are cut off forever. We have got to bear in mind that finishing is my job. I must finish this job. And tonight I'm not I'm finished what finish what? I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what you're fighting with. I don't know what's causing you discomfort. But the important thing here. Is that whatever is causing your discomfort, you have got to make it up in your mind that you are going to finish what God has ordained for your life. You must finish. Make a determination that you're going to finish. Make a determination that I, I, am, I, am, I, am, I am determined that whatever God has placed for me to do in my life, I'm going to finish it. It might be a business that look like it just can't come together in COVID-19 and you're about to draw the shutter. I don't know what you're facing, but whatever you're facing, I say to you, God, David said to Solomon, the Lord, my God, who is also your God, Solomon, he will not forsake you until you have completed the task that he has designed for you. So I want to give us some words of comfort right now. 
Then I know you lose some friends today. Don't write them off forever. They will come back. Further, here's some words of comfort. In Ecclesiastes chapter, um, chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11 and 12. And I want to encourage you to stay in the race, even though others who are in the race are more accomplished than you. Here is the great man Solomon now. By now, he was settled in his ministry. God was using the word wisdom to guide his life. Here is Solomon. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9, verse, 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 verse um, 11. But I want to start to verse 10. What, whatever thy hand find to do, do it. With all with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. Remember, I said to you, when you are dead, you can't accomplish your response, your job. So stay alive and accomplish what God has given to you. Solomon said, Whatever your hand find to do, do it with your might. Oh, I want to thank God for this opportunity to share with you in this Bible class on Facebook Live. You know, it was not something that I ran down, but thank God I'm sharing with you this evening. And if I help you to come out of the dull jumps tonight, mission accomplished. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave where we're all going one of these days. Solomon said, I returned and saw under the sun. I want to talk to somebody that, who they keep telling you that you never reach nowhere. They keep telling you that you are nobody. Well, here's a great man, Solomon. Solomon says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men. Of understanding Solomon said are yet favor to men of skill but time and chance happen it to them all you know everybody has your chance the important thing for you to do is to maximize your season the race is not for the swift nor the battle for the strong but the race is, the Solomon says, sometimes what you get is chance and time. It, all of us have time. And once there's time, there's a chance. And so I say to you, that although you might be in a class right now, 20 of you doing a bachelor's, 20 of you trying to own a skill, and everybody's doing better than you. You say, it's not for you to quit. Time and chance happen to all of us. It is some time on the brink of letting go that you come to recognize that you should have held on a little longer. The story is told of a man who fell in a well. Well was very dark. Yeah. And on his way down, in the well, he grabbed, he was grabbing and grab onto the rope. You know the rope that the bucket is, but by the way, the old well. So the bucket had dropped off, rope was freeing. But he decided, you know what? He hung onto the rope. That was his last chance. The well was deep. He couldn't know whether, whether he was halfway to the bottom or at the bottom or up the top. But he was held on. And he held on for as long as he could have done. And when his hands now were cramped and he could not do anything else, he let go. Guess what? As he let go, his foot, his feet touched the bottom of the well. He was right there and didn't know. Can I say to somebody this evening, 
that in the midst of your disturbance and your uncertainty, be determined to finish it. I spoke to a sister in our church many years ago. She was a very good seamstress, excellent at what she did. But through the years, I kept telling her that she's she accomplished nothing. They keep telling her she has no sense. And after having heard it so long from her family members, after a while, she believed it. And so she put the, 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 her, her machine, a very good machine that she bought years ago in a box. She put it back in the box and pushed it under the bed. And one Sunday morning, as the Lord anointed me to minister to, my, to the people, I, I said to her, who told you that you're not going to come to anything? Who told you that you have no sense, you have no use? There is a skill that God has given to you that you can maximize on. Get back to work. She cried. She went home, reached under the bed, opened that box. By now, there was more dirt than machine. Dust, you know. But she brushed off her machine, dusted it, and, and dusted it off, and said, if God says, that I have a mission to finish. I'm going to do it. That sister began to sew pillowcases, sheet sets. Today, she don't have a hand to sell pillowcase, sheet set. Sent her daughter to university, doing tremendously well for herself because she believed the word from the Lord. And the word says, if it is not over, God has not forsaken you. You can complete the mission, the work that God has given to you. Not by might, nor by strength, but it's by my faith, my, 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 my spirit, said the Lord. So here's, stay in the race, even though those around you might be more equal than you or more talented than you. Stay in the race even though those around you might make you feel sometimes or at all times that you're not doing anything. One of these days, one of these days, you're going to come through. A young man went on a tour once. All he blew was his instrument. He, he would, nobody would invite him on a tour. But his friend was going to tour somewhere in Africa. So he took up his instrument and the friend said, I'm going to take you with me to help me with my equipment. Well, when he reached down, down for the big concert one day, I think it was somewhere in Lagos. Thousands of people were gathered in the arena or the big open space where they were going to, it was, it's, it's the, the accomplished musician was going to perform. Something happened and his mic that he was going to use and some other equipment just wouldn't work. And when the time came for the, for the, for the um, concert to start, he couldn't, the big musician couldn't start. So he said to the little man, now who is his, help him fix up. He said, you have that instrument with you? I said, yes, boss. He said, go, they go play it for me now. He said, boss, you're crazy. I can't wait for those thousands of people, they're going to boo me. The friend said, no man, go hold them a little bit because I'm getting restless now and my equipment not coming up. Go on out there. So the young man said, he took a physical instrument, closed his eyes when he reached on the stage because he couldn't look at the crowd. The crowd was bigger. I don't mind how it was boisterous. But he decided to begin to play his little, whatever instrument he had. And the more he played, it's a quieter the crowd become. And he was playing. They were not quarreling anymore. And then the, he noticed. He could open his eyes. He would dare open his eyes. He was nervous. But he noticed the booze start to turn to cheers. And so he, he ventured to open one eye and see them clapping him. And say, yeah, man, play, man, play. And he began to play. And he began to play. You know what? Just an opportunity turned for him 
into his own contract because now they were not just he was not just going there as a baggage boy he was going there in his own right to play his own music and to express his own talent you have got to finish what god has given for you to do first corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24 first corinthians 9 and verse 24 i want to leave you with this tremendous word from the lord paul says to the corinthian brethren know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receive at the price so run that you may obtain paul went on to say and every man that strives for mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we who serve the lord do it to obtain an incorruptible crown paul says i therefore so run not as uncertainty so fight i not as one that beat at the ear yes paul speaking so paul said i keep my body on into subjection lest by any means when i have preached others i myself be a castaway in other words paul is saying i am determined to finish what god has given me to finish i'm determined to accomplish my job and so here is a word now i've been giving that encouraging word here is paul speaking to timothy paul says timothy in first timothy 4 verse 5 watch thou in all things endure affliction i know it's tough upon you sometimes but endure affliction do the work of an evangelist i don't know what work god has given to you what mission god has given to you but do your work what god gave it to do make full proof of your ministry in other words when you finish make sure everything that you carried is emptied out and people will benefit from your emptiness because you would have given them everything that's why you are now empty god will fill you back paul continued paul said for i am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand in other words paul had reached a stage now where the race really was over paul says i have fought a good fight i have finished my course i have kept the faith am i talking to somebody this evening who want to give up no man paul was shipwrecked paul was said he was criticized and abused by false brethren paul said he, he was robbed he was beaten fought his tribe save one paul said i've been fought a good fight i now finish my course and have kept the faith paul says you know what henceforth from now going forward in the name of jesus there was laid up for me a crown of righteousness when you finish you'll be rewarded when you finish you'll be rewarded not before stay in the race paul says for me a crown there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and paul says you know what when i go to price giving at the marriage supper of the lamb i the crown of righteousness that i shall receive but he looked into the ear the times and saw you my brother my sister and he said not to me only 
but that all them that love is appearing. Paul was saying, when all is said and done, when you have finished your race, then there's a crown of righteousness that God, the righteous judge, have for all those who follow on and finish the race. I want to believe this evening, therefore, that there are some persons who are listening this evening, the Lord sent you to this platform. And I want to say that there are so many Bible classes going on this evening, but God sent you to this platform. Hallelujah. And I believe in God right now for you. That you felt like giving up, like quitting, quitting on your marriage, oh glory. Quitting on your children, quitting on your job. You might be studying at school and feel like you just can't make it. You might have just recovered from some sickness and COVID-19 knock you down. But can I speak life over you this evening? You shall not die. Hallelujah. You shall live to finish the work that God has ordained in your life. No matter how you feel like giving up now, stay in the race. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might feel that you have, the doctor may have prescribed one more operation for you. And you say, you know what? I prefer to die. Nobody who is dead is able to fulfill the work that God has placed on you. Paul Solomon says, there's no knowledge in the grave. There's no accomplishment in the grave. But as long as you stay alive, somebody will be blessed because of you. I want to pray for you this evening, therefore, that God will continue to just take it to another level, lift your um, the song that says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Because my heart of no desire to stay. Where doubts arise, fear this me. Or some may dwell where these abide. Abound. But my prayer, my aim is higher ground. I want to give you this song this evening as you dare to trust God one more time to help you to finish the race that you have started. Hallelujah. Somebody just reflect now and say, Lord, if you brought me this far, you'll finish it. So take me to the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take me to the king. Mm, I want to thank you this evening, Lord. Hallelujah. Again, let me just remind you that we have no copyright for these songs. But we just want to bless God that we can use them to help us in our ministry. I'm going to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, there's so much obstacles and setbacks in the way, Lord. And some people now, Lord, have decided to throw in the towel. They just can't take it anymore. But I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody this evening, Lord, will be encouraged to try again. Hallelujah. Will be encouraged to try one more time. Because you know what, Lord? You never brought us this far to leave us. As a way pledge that we're going to finish the work. Like Paul, fight a good fight. Finish the course. But henceforth, a crown of righteousness is laid up for us. We bless you now. We tell you thanks. 
in Jesus name in Jesus name I pray that as you joined us this evening that you are really blessed you know oh God so good and I really want to thank you for sharing in this ministry and to you know join us each evening and to encourage the work I want to thank my own family members my son um, who is a technical man and your wife who is a program director she ensures that I cross my T's and dot my I's and put the S where they're supposed to be I want to say bless you every one of you bless you so much oh God is good and I pray don't backslide no man come too far too far to backslide no stay in the race don't give up your Christianity now for any short term promise finish the race oh when God finish blessing you you are going to remember this evening's encouragement God bless you listen this word this song may you be encouraged amen amen as you continue to support the work of the Lord and the blessing in this ministry thank you again God bless you and be encouraged see you again God's willing next week same time same place amen with, a, with another word from the Lord praise God hallelujah he's worthy to be praised amen